Um, hi, everyone. Today I'll talk about our work on block ciphers, especially linear layers. And I also talk about uh, our propo proposed cipher pride. So uh, I'll start with some generic information, probably most of you know, um, about block ciphers to lead the discussion to our focus, linear layers, and I'll uh, give the details of our proposed uh, pride cipher. So let's start with block ciphers. So as you probably all know, uh, block ciphers are one of the most um, prominently used cryptographic primitives. It's um, a large portion of critical or uncritical data is encrypted using these block ciphers. Uh, with the rise of ubiquitous computing especially, uh, we also had some lightweight block cipher uh, proposals, especially for resource constraint uh, devices. Uh, for block ciphers, we have two main design strategies. Uh, one is addition, rotation, XOR constructions, which are without SBOX, and SBOX-based constructions. Uh, today, we will focus on the SBOX-based ones as we are trying to actually offer an alternative, an efficient alternative to ARX ones. So, uh, with, again, with SBOX-based constructions, we have two different strategies. One is FaceTill. Uh, most prominent example is this, but we will focus on substitution permutation networks uh, with the most prominent example AES, which, is, which has very strong security. And more important for us today, especially for this talk, it demonstrated that uh, a well-chosen linear layer is not just uh, good for efficiency or security, but it also facilitates us uh, to argument, uh, have the arguments for the security. Uh, and it also had some good results on software and hardware platforms, but not especially light for uh, resource constraint devices. Uh, but it inspired many cipher designs, so we also had some lightweight proposals, but uh, most of them were targeting hardware, so we had present encrypt and LED prints so far. And if we focus uh, more on SPN, we can see that um, we have this S and P, which we call nonlinear and linear layer. And for, uh, with this nonlinear layer, which is made up of S boxes, um, we have actually studied it so far quite well. Like we have many papers, many general designs, but unfortunately, linear layer is a bit understudied. So that's why we focus on uh, linear layer. So of course, diffusion is the main role of uh, the linear layer and its desired properties are to have high and fast dependency, high number of active S boxes, and of course, efficiency for the implementations. So actually, especially in software for the stock, because it also often guarantees hardware efficiency. So for linear layer, there's, there are two design approaches. We have ad hoc constructions with serpent and sha tree as uh, prominent examples. They are secure. They're efficient, but unfortunately not easy. So it's like one-time design, so it's not so satisfactory from scientific point of view. And there is also wide trail strategy, which, for example, using MDS codes, we have some efficient examples like um, photon and LED, which are mostly for serial implementations on hardware, but uh, I mean they are secure, but usually they are costly. Uh, but they are easier. They have some generic thing, but we don't know any trade-offs. So, our observations, the open problems in, in this area in uh, linear layer is, especially we don't have many general linear layer, ex, uh, linear layer constructions. If we had, we would, that would allow us to choose between a large uh, variety of trade-offs and uh, a second thing, uh, the existing linear layer solutions, as I said, they are generally targeting low area, latency and power, just for hardware, but they're costly in software platforms, which is not good for us. So we are targeting speed and code size in software platforms in our work. And we will have a new methodology to construct good linear layers, and uh, we will optimize it for software. So what we did for that is we use a construction that we call block interleaving construction. So definition is given here, uh, given K, 2N, and D codes over F2B. We will construct the code with same parameters over F2KB. 
which means uh, we have k generator matrices of this form, and we will construct a matrix of L. So here, P and P inverse, actually a bit permutation, just uh, try to recall if you throw this, something like that. So let's see it on an example, which is better. Um, so let's say we have a state with eight boxes, eight S boxes of orbit each. We will have a linear layer, so it's some kind of SV network here. And uh, as we have eight S boxes of orbit each, we have these parameters, and we will split this L in four parts, we call Li, and each of them will be eight by eight matrix. So it will look something like this. So we have this P, uh, P inverse P here, and L0, L1, L2, uh, L2, L3. So the question is, is it suitable for software? At the first glance, it's again looking something like present or just uh, the, the difficult uh, permutation. Yeah, but if we uh, try to have a look on a rectangle of four by eight, and if we just put our uh, state like this, so we have S box here, so in the first one, we will uh, work the S box on the first row, then on the second, then third, fourth, and eight. So we have the S boxes working on the rows. Then the linear layer work on the columns. So we will have four instances of uh, linear layers, which means four matrix multiplications, actually. And uh, this means we, we worked all our S boxes and linear layers on the state. And we already had the permutation due to the um, Due to, due to the state. So, the question is, how should we choose LI? I mean, uh, should we ask, uh, should we look for the cheapest implementation of a given linear layer? Is it the, the right thing to look for? No, because it's difficult. I mean, you have some specific linear layer, you try to see if it's the most efficient one, it's not the uh, correct thing. But instead, we ask, which linear layers can be implemented with n instructions. So in turn, it will give us also the number of clock cycles, which is for speed, and number of bytes, which is code size. So this uh, interleaving thing, block interleaving thing, helps us here because it gives us smaller linear layers, so we will focus on them. It will reduce our search space. So if we come to pride there, uh, as it's our uh, main target. Uh, it is actually a software-oriented cipher designed mostly for widely used embedded process microprocessors. This is the target. And we're, we're, our, our target is especially Atmos AVR 8-bit instruction set, uh, which is for easier and fairer comparison because most of the 8-bit um, implementations are done on this platform. And uh, we are targeting traditional design methods for easier security analysis. Uh, like I said before, not ours, but we are trying to go for the SBOX based design. And our benchmark is actually NSA's uh, SPEC 64, uh, 64 bit with 128 key cipher. So we are targeted to try to beat this, beat this one. And not that ARCS is followed there. And we had another target to be the first block cipher published at crypto. I checked all possible, all, all published papers at crypto. Hope this is true. Please don't be mad at me if it's not. <laughs> so uh, key figures for Pride is, it's of course 64 bit uh, block, it has 64 bit block size, 128 bit keys. And uh, you can see here we have a key whitening, prayer post whitening. And this is the core of the cipher with 20 rounds. And uh, just the last one is different, like in AES, we are dropping the linear layer. And it has very simple key scheduling. We are dividing the key into two. We are using the first half in the whitening. And the second half is used, actually, um, with some key scheduling. And it modifies uh, four bytes of K1 per round using some round constants. And this helps us uh, to get rid of invariant subspace uh, sub attacks. 
And note that the permutations P and P inverse, they go away due to the bit slice design. So we just have the cost of uh, uh, non-linear layer and linear layer, not the cost of permutations. So as a substitution layer, we use an involution S-box, uh, which is very efficient, a simple one, but a very efficiently implementable one. Um, actually, we, we are just using 10 instructions per eight parallel S-boxes. Uh, the, the characteristics of the S-box is like, its best correlation of any linear approximation is one half, and maximal uh, probability of a differential is one quarter. And the more important part for us, the linear layer, as I said already, we use block interleaving construction. So we search for some efficient codes there. Efficient codes there. We looked for four efficiently implementable linear 32, 16, four codes. So actually, we adapted a, design, uh, a search uh, of Luri et al, um, which was done for S-boxes uh, and on software platform. But our search was performed instead of uh, software platform. It was performed on hardware platform, which is FPGA. And uh, so we had some faster search and larger search space. Of course, we also had some different optimizations. So that was the main difference. So. What we exactly did was uh, we searched in a subset of uh, possible 16 by 16 matrices using an FPGA. We first limited the number of instructions. So these are the instructions that would lead us to a linear layer. For example, no end is there. And we limited the uh, number of use registers, just two state and four temporary registers. So we tried all possible combinations of instructions and registers uh, given. And uh, in the end, we saved the matrices, generating the appropriate code. And out of these, we tried to look for the ones with the least number of instructions. And in the end, we ended up with 36 instructions for the whole linear layer, which is actually uh, for four of them. We had uh, seven instructions for one, uh, like two seven and uh, two 11 instructions. So uh, the round function is something like this. So this means for this uh, S-boxes, we have um, 20 instructions, like 10 here, 10 here, permutations, their costs go away, and this is the 36 uh, instruction linear layer. And you can see the total count for one uh, round. Uh, we have 68, including key update, key addition, S-boxes, and linear layer, and the code size is just a double of that, as it's 16 bits instruction. So, uh, if we compare it with, the, uh, with some ciphers, some existing works in the literature, you can see that it's, of course, um, meeting all uh, possible like lightweight uh, ciphers. And our main target, Spec, and also Simon, we are also uh, meeting Simon, which is especially for hardware, which is normal then. And we cannot really beat Spec, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, but note that actually data key read and write is omitted in spec, so I'm not saying we would just uh, beat if we add them, probably not, but still there is some more cost there. And our decryption overhead is also not that bad. So you can see it's just a few more cycles. And yeah, so we are, our results are close to spec, which is nice because they are good results for a traditional design. And on the security part, we actually just went for some very classical uh, cryptanalysis. We uh, performed linear and differential cryptanalysis. Uh, best possible linear and differential trails were generated for 16 rounds. Uh, and we didn't see any clustering of these optimal trails. And other attacks like zero correlation algebraic, we tried them. We didn't see any uh, serious issues. But of course, further security is analyzed, analysis is encouraged. And actually, there is already one. So uh, Zhao et al, they uh, did this work, differential analysis on block cipher pride. Recently, they found 16 different two-round iterative uh, characteristics. They constructed several 15-round differentials. And based on these, they launched a differential attack on 18-round pride with I don't know if you can see with data time memory complexity, uh, two to the power of 60, two to the power of 66, and two to the power of 64. 
So it's on 18 rounds pride. We still have 20, probably, OK. And some feature directions uh, for linear layers specifically. We would like to improve the hardware source. So we want to cover larger space, maybe actually the overall space, the whole space. So maybe we come up with some better linear layer, even better than 36. Uh, so finding more efficient constructions then. And we want to explore more uh, trade-offs. And we would like to extend to different platforms as, I mean, AVR, this is AVR specific. We also uh, had some results for 16-bit uh, micro-post processors. They're also not bad compared to uh, other uh, ciphers. But we could try to have some um, designs specific for other platforms. And for Pride, we would like to have even more security analysis, of course. So we are done. Thanks for listening. Any questions? Thank you.